Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in a philosophy of religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman, published in 1940. We're going to continue on with the uh, theodicy question, or the theodicy problem. We're going to look at pages 350 to 380, and we're going to take a look at uh, the human response to the uh, revelation present in existence and how that is a cooperative endeavor between God and humanity toward the teleology of purpose. So we address Brightman's tele teleology in this lesson. We're going to start with block one on selfhood and consciousness. We begin with a speculative self. There are eight aspects of self-consciousness, says Brightman. There's a Self-experience as unified and complex. There is the ability to distinguish qualities. There is the experience of time. There is transcendence as awareness of an elevating the self through teleosis aim. There is a striving for ends and the ability to form and deposit significations. And there is the logic of faith response to experience. And there is, of course, a possession of a subjective private reasoning. All of these contribute to the definition of consciousness for Brightman. Self is a unified self. In note 2, true identical unity is essential for spiritual development. That implies the need for moral growth and responsible praxis. We can take up four perspectives, says Brightman. We can take up the uh, epiphenomenal the analytic, the substantialist, and the organic. <clears throat> the epiphenomenal says that consciousness is the physiological brain and that unity is the nervous system. But there's no rational interpreter under that position and Brightman says it must be neg negated. Under the analytic perspective, consciousness equals uh, simple impressions. And uh, unity is the complex of the mind. There's no unifying holistic properties, and therefore it must be negated, says Brightman. Under the substantialist, consciousness is the substance of the soul. Uh, unity is the unity of psyche. But uh, there's no interpretive personality, and therefore it must be negated. Brightman prefers the organic perspective. Consciousness is the immanent self, and unity is the identity of the self through experience, memory, and anticipation. He says that is the position that must be affirmed, the organic perspective. We are conscious human beings with an organic, holistic perspective. And we are a self that interacts. In note three, the self always interacts with the environment, the environment is the uh, biological brain, physical nature, social person interaction, and our subconscious. And we do posit ideals that are beyond the immediate. We do seek the uh, to define the metaphysical real. And nature and its metaphysical ground are enjoined within human consciousness. And that equals our cooperative endeavor with God. We are, through our logic of faith, participating in that uh, metaphysical coherence, that metaphysical coherence that we perceive through spiritual perception. We participate in metaphysical coherence as authentic selfhood through the logic of faith, which is experimental positing, outgoing, desire for ideal and interpretive construction. But this dialectical endeavor is what we go through in order to reach spiritual existence or what Brightman calls spiritual life. And so if we take a look at block two, we'll take a look at the self and spirituality. We begin with a history, meaning, and measure. 
The self develops ideal values. Spiritual ideals define what it means to be human. Spiritual values provide the real as the meaning for history. We look at the we look at the posited real as that which is that which defines the meaning of history. Spirit imprints nature with divine purpose. And every self must achieve spiritual personality through the process of dialectical struggle, which is the logic of faith. The spiritual real measures our spiritual growth in personality. And we reflect God as person, the concept of God as person. And so God as person is taken up a note too. And God as person possesses seven divine aspects of personality, which are, again, self-experience, ideals, consciousness of space and time, transcendence, purpose-driven intent, purpose-driven will, awareness of meaning, responsive action toward all of creation, including humanity. God as person is inferred from our own personal consciousness. God as person possesses a power and a choice to order all experience, to order the given. So if we look at note three, Brightman takes us to his conclusion here. History plus God as person equals five aspects of otherness or difference. Because God has neither beginning nor end, the given is an integral aspect of the divine personality. God possesses obviously no body, no nervous system. God creates other persons and God is perfectly personal and perfectly complete in and of himself. So Brightman says if we're going to really faithfully consider the theodicy question, then we have to thoroughly investigate human response because we are in a cooperative endeavor toward moral value with God. So the theodicy question involves analysis of what we've looked at here, block one, identity and consciousness, and then block two, spiritual life in cooperative participation. And so if you look at block three, identity plus spirituality equals the problem of purpose. We are addressing the problem of purpose that is the other side of uh, the theodicy question. Previously we discussed the uh, theodicy question from the side of God. Now we, did, we finalized that question analysis by examining the problem of purpose. And first we'll begin by looking at uh, identity and purpose. Something of purpose is present in every state of consciousness. Selves are fighting for ends. Living religion is primarily concerned with purpose. So under religion and purpose, personality plus value equals our striving for religious end. We seek the conservation of axiogenetic tendencies and axiosoteric events that we discussed in a previous lesson. We seek out to raise brute fact to axiosoteric events. The logic of faith has value for its purpose, and God as person becomes setter of goals. We seek to direct brute fact with spiritual purpose by actualizing axiogenetic tendencies and elevating situation to axiosoteric event. Now, under teleology and purpose, purpose is made manifest in nature and in human experience. The first axiom is nature does not does nothing in vain. The second axiom is that nature is conquered by observation, experiment, and interpretation. Or at the level of a living religion, experimental positing, outgoing desire, and interpretive construction. Now under note 4, mechanism. There are mechanisms in all scientific observation. These mechanisms vary in nature and in complexity, but the concept of coherence of mechanism is inadequate to explain coherence. The validity of, validity of mechanism is always challenged by non-mechanical 
principles of purpose. Scientific mechanism applies only to isolated states of, affair, of affairs, as it is not a universal, coherent concept. Teleology, however, gives a coherent description of experience, and the facts of purpose are undeniable, says Brightman. So we must posit this notion of a teleosis, or a teleology. We must posit this notion of a non-mechanistic teleosis that is a cooperative effort between God and humanity in striving toward moral perfection and moral completeness, completeness of the kingdom. And that's the answer to the theodicy question. It's a two-sided answer. We've already discussed in the previous lesson the objective or the God side of answering the theodicy problem. We took up the notion of the given, and we discussed that in depth. But in this lesson, Brightman has given us uh, what must be the cooperative response of humanity. And uh, defining our own identity and consciousness through response, and then enabling and empowering spiritual life through our response, and then aiming toward and actualizing teleosis purpose through our response. So we kind of get a teleology breakdown of what logic of faith means in this lesson. In pages 350 to 380, we really get a look at what does the logic of faith look like, look like abbreviated under the category of teleology. And under the concept of teleology, it looks like a drive and a desire for self-identity within a spiritual consciousness. And it means enacting and empowering and sustaining spiritual life. And it means pursuing purpose, taking up uh, the axiogenetic tendencies, and lifting situations to axiosoteric event. We lift situation to event of redemption, event of salvation. All of this continues the answer for Brightman for the theodicy question. It's a two-sided answer. It is not a sing last lesson was not a fully completed answer. He posited the notion of the given. He helped us to understand the objective side answering the theodicy problem. But now we look at the subjective side of answering the theodicy problem in these uh, 30 pages from 350 to 380. So it's critical information. It completes his um, discussion of the theodicy problem. And we get to realize that uh, the theodicy problem is a mirror type. The answer to the theodicy problem is a mirror type answer that reflects the previous lesson that we had very early on of revelation and logic of faith being two sides of a singularity of action. Revelation and logic of faith reflect now on the objective answer and the subjective answer to the theodicy problem. So it ties into revelation and logic of faith. That was two-sided. The theodicy question is a two-sided issue. So we get the complete content now and, again, profound and empowering content, obviously spirit-filled content. And Brightman does a great job of uh, rounding out his position and filling in the gaps by giving us the subjective side of answering the theodicy problem. And that's going to wrap up this lesson of pages 350 to 380. We'll pick up next time on page 381.